Hi guys, Ethan here, and I've got Nix and Vax to help me share with you why it's important to keep your dogs in shape all year round. Now, first of all, we're gonna talk about these guys are canine athletes, and it's important for our athletes to be in good body condition. Like many of you may have experienced or know of fad diets, um, that's not a healthy thing on us, right? It's not good for us to gain weight and then lose weight and then gain weight and then lose weight. And that's the same thing with these guys, but it's uh, pretty exponentially more important because their lives are so much shorter than ours. We wanna keep our hunting dogs, because they're so important to us, in good body condition and running shape all year round. Now, how we like to do this is through roading. Now, roading, it's the process of putting on a harness and setting up a small pulling slash pacing scenario with a four-wheeler. We typically run two dogs together, so they are running in tandem with each other. It builds a little bit of competition and allows them to keep working hard. It also, we run them on rock or gravel, which is gonna toughen their pads. I would say one of the number one things that we hear once hunting season rolls around is that A, somebody either calls and says, my dog's gun shy because I didn't prepare them for the hunting season. Or they say, my dog just ran its pads off. What can I put on them to help them heal faster? Now I'm gonna tell you right now, you could avoid all of that by roading your dogs regularly and keeping them conditioned. Now, like any athletic event, you have to work up to this. Now, these two guys I'm gonna show you today are pros. They're very, very good at this. They love doing it and it, they're gonna make it look easy. But when you get started with your dog, we're gonna take and we're gonna put on this roading harness. It's gonna fit up here over his shoulders. You can see how nicely that fits down over his neck. And then we're gonna actually buckle this under the deepest part of his chest, kind of up here close to the uh, where his leg attaches. We don't want this to be too tight because we don't want it to be restricting. Now, we put this on a dog for the first time. We're actually gonna take and clip a check cord or a long line leash of some sort to the back of this, okay? And help get the dog used to putting a little bit of pressure on that. Good. And you can see that he's okay pulling against me a little bit. He's got really good leash manners, so, but okay, come on. We just want him to feel comfortable moving, not fighting. Some dogs will feel a little bit of discomfort with that harness being up over them or something new. So get your dog walking around to begin with, and that should help them settle in once we move to the actual rig. Now, we're gonna talk about a couple different things that are important once we get started moving with the dogs. One of which is that, like I said before, the dogs are going to be more or less pacing. This is not a sled they're pulling, and these are not sled harnesses that they've got on. Um, they're gonna be kind of keeping pace with the four-wheeler, um, which is going to be really, really, really good exercise for them. So it's gonna build good muscle, it's gonna keep them in good condition, and it's a lot more straightforward straight moving paths, things that are gonna be less likely for them to get injured in the off season. Anytime the dogs are running and jumping and leaping, there's a potential for injury. And this consistent repetitive motion is going to be able to continue to build good stamina and good muscle mass without the potential of injury in the off season. Now, we're gonna get Nick's hooked up over here. Get him by his buddy Vex. Good job guys, okay. So we've got these guys hooked up here and I wanna show you this rig. We basically have a pole mounted to the front of our, that's a steel tubing pole, mounted to the front of our four-wheeler that extends out to keep these guys away from the four-wheeler. Now, with the length of these chains and everything else, they are pretty safe. It's also, it's always important though to be able to keep an eye on them. The next thing is that and we hear this pretty regularly. I don't know if it's like a macho man mentality, um, but people are always talking about how fast they can run their dogs or they run their dogs out of their pickup trucks or things like that. And they say, isn't that just the same? They're still running, they're getting exercise. Well, it's definitely not, and it's definitely not as controlled. In this situation, these guys absolutely love this. And you're gonna see it in a minute. As soon as I fire that four wheeler up, they're gonna go ballistic because they love running and they love working. But we can't, 
give to them by going as fast as they want to run because there's too many things that could potentially happen. We've got to keep this at a well-maintained pace. It's more about marathon type conditioning than it is about some kind of, you know, sprinting speed race. So we're definitely going to be able to help, like I mentioned, pace them in this process. And um, it's important for you when you're starting out with your dog, you're going to be starting out really slow as they get used to it. But don't think because they get used to it and it's a lot of fun that you can just go faster and faster and faster. If they were to be running along and see a bird or a rabbit or something off to the side and try and dart that way and you're, you know, cruising at maybe 15 or pushing 15 plus miles an hour and they go to turn this way, then you're going to leave them in the dust. So you've got to keep this at a manageable pace. Usually we're staying at about 10 miles an hour or slightly under. And then we're trying to continue to extend the amount of distance that they get to run each trip. And when we start off, we probably go with a new dog that's starting. It's not in great shape. We're going to do about a mile, mile and a half that first run. That's usually a pretty good amount. But you have to play into each dog. Just like us, there are days that, you know, I like to keep myself in shape. There are days that when I run, you know, I just feel like crap and I can only do maybe a two mile run that day. Well, the dogs are going to be the same. So you have to kind of watch them and figure out most dogs are not lazy. So if they're telling you, hey, I'm tired today, just give them a break. But then slowly working up those distances to where when we get these guys in primo, primo shape, they're running, they're roading somewhere in the vicinity of about six, maybe seven miles, depending on the day. It's also important to pay attention when you are roading these guys on the temperature outside. Um, it's gonna be just as, if not a bigger effect on them, because we're riding on the four-wheeler, not feeling the effects of the heat, and they're working really hard with their light fur coats on. So pay attention to all of those things. When we do this, I usually make it in laps. So with our specific setup, we've got about a half a mile driveway, which is, I know, ideal for us. Not everybody has this situation, but we'll go a loop up and down the driveway, and that's gonna give them a little bit easier on the way down, because we've kind of got a downhill slope, but then they've got to work pretty hard on the way up. Then we make a little loop at the end of our driveway, which is going to be a relaxation time period. They pretty much walk this loop. So they're going to run for approximately seven to 10 minutes, and then they get to walk a slow loop, catch their breath, slow their heart, down, heart rate down, and it becomes almost like a borderline hit training type program. They work hard, and then they get to relax, and then they work hard and get to relax, and that's gonna help to build up conditioning. So we're gonna get, um, I think we've got everything set up here. These guys' harnesses look really good. I'm gonna go ahead and get the four-wheeler fired up, and then we will take off and start these guys on their first loop. Also, in case you wondered, I believe it is a prerequisite that you have to have some old crappy four-wheeler in order to be part of a real roading rig. Something like this old Honda Rancher, if you can find it, it's like 250 bucks for the four-wheeler, that would be the way that I would go. Let's see here. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Let's go. Maybe a little nicer four-wheeler. Hey guys, thanks everybody for watching. Um, you can see how much the dogs love this and how beneficial it could be for you and your dog. Uh, you know, they always say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We like to keep our dogs in shape year round and this is one excellent way to do that. We appreciate all of you all for watching our channel and if this is your first time to the channel, make sure and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. I'm the guy with the pink gun and we will catch you next time.